Getting a haircut at home. Chastity is a cosmetologist license. Yes, indeed. Ah, those clippers are pulling a little bit. We need the oil. <laughs> All right, <laughs> see you when it's done. I mean, it, you can disagree with me. I know a lot of, probably most people in the world disagree with me. But disagree with me in a reasonable way, please, please. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm pro-choice. Okay. I can objectively and intellectually understand why someone would think that abortion is murder. Okay. Therefore, if that per that woman or family, if they believe that, then they have a right not to have an abortion. But pro-choice means not projecting your religious beliefs. But everyone's religious. No, 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 no. You, you cannot. Your religious beliefs may be very polarized from a, from a, a Muslim. So whose religious beliefs do we get to follow? Yours? It's not a question. Or mine? The, the integral integral part of you of American society is separation of church and state. But that no, is a that's impossible. That's impossible. Well, to there, we can't argue. We can't. There's no way to reason with you. That is a no. Tenet. That's an impossibility, ma'am. And here's the reason why. No. That is Every, a tenet of American but it's democracy. Impossible. No, no. You're misunderstanding what they were writing about. It's not freedom from religion, it's freedom for religion. I didn't say that, you're not listening. But I'm, what I'm saying, no, no, no. Of the separation of state. church and state was a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptist stating that we need to have a separation here in that you cannot legislate that somebody follow one particular re religion. Because we have multi-religions in this country, therefore you can, we have to have separation of any religion one with our society. Yes, that is a tenet but of one, American democracy. No, no, one doctrine or another is going to be enforced. It's an impossibility to get around. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Religious doctrine is, we have separation. Right now, one of sense. your religious doctrines is being implemented into in social. That people can uh, have an abortion without fear of penalty. What, I, I don't understand. That's not logical. What did you say? Okay. Are you going to uh, ridicule me or are you going to no, have no, a conversation? I don't understand what you're you saying. You said it's not logical. How about saying, I didn't understand that. Can you repeat it's, it's it legal. or state it in different it's words? It's legal that your remark to me was not logical. I don't okay. I'll try said. again. If you have an opinion on the matter, it's a part of your philosophy, your worldview. I have an opposing one. So which one wins? What makes yours more valuable than my worldview? No, no, no. Your, your, yours is right for you, but the fact is most Americans don't agree with you. That's a fact. Um, most Americans do not agree with the, with with uh, uh, with pro-lifers. Therefore, we have abortion is legal in most in every state of the union. That's not even true. The numbers. Abortion is legal in every state. Right, of the United but, States. but fact. Many, many laws are established and put into place despite what the majority says. We are a pseudo democracy, folks. Well, I can't We're not really you're truly. Not being, you're not being rational. Okay, she's so rational. That's your exit argument. Is just to throw an ad hom. That's not really good enough. Sorry, folks. What you're going to have to do is make your case stand or fall on its own, not just throw a little mudsling and escape stage left. Okay. If she's going to state that. What I'm saying is illogical or unreasonable. She has to tell me exactly, precisely why. Hey, Tom, I wanted to mention, uh, even though I'm not a believer... You, you believe know, in something. Oh, yeah. You're a believer. I'm not, I'm not a Jesus is you're God not, you're, believer. Yeah, okay. I follow you there. But I still, I still don't like abortion. Now, uh, right here, uh, in 1 Peter 3, it says, Finally, all of you live... In harmony with one another, be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. But you're, uh, you're quoting scripture. Why are you appealing to scripture if you don't believe in it? You know, what you just said is such an enormous uh, non sequitur. I can't believe it. Can you explain why? Okay. This, is, is, uh, this stands alone as um, it has to do with attitude and wisdom. No, I would agree. How to treat other people? This is not. This is is not founded on a belief. But that's where you read that from, right? Yes, it's from the New Testament. Okay, but, but let's pretend you didn't get it from the New Testament. You got it from some other source, right? Of course. If I saw it somewhere else, I would have the same appreciation for it. Right. So then my question is, why?
why is that uh, authoritative? It's not because it's not? I, wait, I don't. It doesn't impress me based on an authoritative thing. That's the problem I have with you and Lewis. I think is I don't believe in following something because it's from an authority. No, but I, I do like you. I do. I'm just saying it's both and. I. I agree with the concept and I like it oh, okay. the same as you agree with it and like it personally for yourself okay that's fine but I also realize that in order for me to say this holds any weight for anyone else it has to have some sort of authority behind it I like these things because I it means something to me it has nothing to do with an outside authority yeah, and, source and cho chocolate means a lot to me too and I like it and I lick it, but see, on the same and time, I like when I lick it. Usually, what happens is people get this way either in the normal course of their development, or sometimes they have some some serious accidents, bad things happen. A lot of times, bad things happening right. is what awakens somebody's heart and changes their attitudes for the better. And these are these right, are I, I I agree with you. you know, in a these sense, are attitudes, that, right? And they don't come just by they don't come by authority or reading. It doesn't work that way. Not when you say by by authority, I'm I'm not saying they come by authority. I'm saying they have weight because of the authority. But it's not only because God said it or it's commanded. It's in conjunction with, it's part of it, but it's in conjunction with the fact that we want to do those things too. Like you want to do stuff, you want to treat people nice. You actually think that regeneration of the heart only occurs to people that, ex, that uh, are in touch with Jesus or have a Jesus experience? You think it doesn't happen to people outside of the Jesus experiment? I guess what you would have to do is then define what you how you're using the term regeneration. Oh. Because I've just defined it in my, the sense that I'm using it, which is that they are conformed to the thinking of God. So that's sort of regeneration. Now let's say, okay, you're you're not lining up the Bible, Henry, and, but yet you feel like you've had this epiphany and revelation, whether it was induced by some uh, drug or just you pondering while you're meditating. I don't know, whatever. You, you could say that's uh, life transformative, and in a way, a regeneration of the way you thought. Do you know? Okay, fine. Have, do, you, do, but, you, do you know anything about personal ego? I know about uh, Sigmund Freud's oh. de de definition That's of the ego. That's about the extent of it, right? The super ego okay. and the id. Now, um, how are you using the word ego? With re uh, regards to like just uh, well, the fact I, that there's a, an okay. entity, a thinking, a conscious no. mind. It's just that uh, everybody has it's it's sort of a mental perspective. It's a thing that's referred to as an ego. And it's where people right. are, are focused on themselves and they think of themselves. Oh, that kind of ego. Yeah, like uh, they're uh, kind of arrogant or right, just self-absorbed. Uh, what what happens is sometimes just for a few moments, for a few minutes. It's, it subsides with people. They they see something. It, what ha what happens is they forget about themselves. Yeah. The maybe, normal. Maybe they went over on a trip overseas and they're like, man. This it, any it can happen just watching a movie, listening to some music, or uh, looking. If at, even just for a moment, and then they go back to just their for a few moments. It, right. But there's a certain thing that happens where they they the attention on themselves falls away. Right. And they have very, very relevant, important experiences. Okay. And uh, sometimes it happens to people just out of the random. Sometimes it happens when bad things happen or shocks in their lives. Uh, a loved one dies or something. Um, so you're saying that people outside of biblical Christianity can have, in some way, similar experiences no, no, that no. show that they want to be... Reaching out to people, compassionate. No, it could it could actually it could happen to a lot of people inside right. biblical Christianity. No, I, but I, they're not even aware. You're saying it's not exclusive. Right? They they could get those feelings. Those things can happen. Uh, but they may just think, oh, this is the Holy Spirit coming through me. This is the this is Jesus making this happen. That, you know, that uh, it can definitely happen to people. Anybody, any they could be atheists. 
Bible believer or anything. Right. Here's my worldview, which would, would yes, answer you in that that is true that the person who believes it has God working through them, and the person who doesn't believe it has God working through them. It's not contingent upon whether or not you believe something. God has uh, allowed some people to be more depraved than others. You'll find some fairly virtuous people by human standards uh, who are, have not maybe even totally anti-God. Now, my experience is that most people who rail against the God of the Bible are, are pretty immoral people and pretty base in their practices, but you, there's exceptions to the rule. And maybe there's uh, certain Buddhist people um, who are pretty peaceful. Now, I know a lot of the painting of certain groups have been inaccurate in many respects. For example, with Buddhist monks or Hindus, they think they're like these dudes sitting on mountains with, with their lotus position legs folded, and it's all about meditation and peace. That's not true. There's a lot of uh, angry, uh, you know, violent behaviors and, and, and things that happen. Um, a lot of, uh, and this one Buddhist monk, he told me about how he used to be a Buddhist monk and they're really uh, sexually deviant, so on and so forth. But irrespective, they still do have those moments. If even for a couple of days, this epiphany that comes to them and they're, you know, all about humanitarianism and they want to save the world and everything like that, and then they get disillusioned, who knows what happens. I understand because I'm a human being who has similar experiences. But that's not what the Bible's talking about when it, it's re, uh, talking about regeneration. Because my view is Calvinistic, you know. God is in control of all people, even the unregenerate, and if he allows them to be having a nice, compassionate heart for a time, okay, that's his will. Doesn't mean they're saved. What do you think is the explanation for all the things you're describing? Well, a, a large part of it is it's just a mental habit. It's just... It's just... It's just something people get used to. It is, it's what, what if it's both? What if it is a mental habit and God doing things, using oh. the mental habit? You ever thought about that option? I don't know if you've mentioned to these people about the DNA and how the cell structure, you know, how complex it is. Mm -hmm. Information can only come from a mind, right? Otherwise, it's just stuff. Maybe it's doing things, but in order for me to eat, like language, we're using language right now. This is information. Otherwise, it's just, it's just sound. Vibrations in the wind means nothing. Unless you have a mind which can formulate the language, and then another mind, there has to be a second mind to receive the information. You would not need to develop a language if you were by yourself forever on an island. And so, with regards to another kind of information, that which we see, in the cells, uh, or you know, anywhere in the world, we we find that in order for that to be the case, there has to be a mind. And DNA, like I said, has that information, so DNA can only come from a mind. Is the argument? It's simple. It's logical. You can agree with it or disagree with it, but I, and I know you're not disagreeing, but for those who are, I would like to know why you disagree with that formulation and what is the alternative. So you have to do both argument from the reliability of our cognitive faculties you know who's to say we can trust this buzzing chemical vat that is in our cranium either for anything I'm producing at the moment or to recall that which I've already learned how can I trust my memory we assume these things but we assume them on what foundation is the question if your foundation is we're just matter in motion. We've gone from molecules to man or hydrogen to human, whatever. How does that give you any sort of justification for validating the words you speak in debate? <laughs> Talk in the normal voice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do the all right, do the old man voice. No, not the growl. Do the old man go.